In the little town of Franconia, you can find a unique landmark to New England's artistic history. Here, early in his literary career, writing his first books of poems, no modern writer has defined New England more completely than Frost. And today, his house is a museum and testament to his wry sensibility, expressed early on in the poem, New Hampshire. If I must choose which I would elevate, the people or the already lofty mountains, I'd elevate the already lofty mountains. The only fault I find with old New Hampshire is that her mountains aren't quite high enough. I was not always so, I've come to be so. How to my sorrow, how have I attained a height from which to look down critical on mountains? What has given me assurance to say what height becomes New Hampshire mountains, or any mountains? Can it be some strength I feel as of an earthquake in my back to heave them higher to the morning star? Can it be foreign travel in the Alps? Or well, having seen and credited a moment the solid molding of vast peaks of cloud behind pitiful reality of Lincoln, Lafayette, and Liberty? Or well, some such sense as says, how high shall jet the fountain in proportion to the basin? No, none of these has raised me to my throne of intellectual dissatisfaction, but the sad accident of having seen our actual mountains given in a map of early times as twice the height they are. 10,000 feet instead of only five, which shows how sad an accident may be. 5,000 feet is no longer high enough. Whereas I never had a good idea about improving people in the world, here I am over fertile in suggestion and cannot rest from planning day or night how high I'd thrust the peaks in summer snow to tap the upper sky and draw a flow of frosty night air on the veil below down from the stars to freeze the dew as starry. The more the sensiblest I am, the more I seem to want my mountains wild. For all the mountains fall a little short, her people not quite short enough for art. She's still New Hampshire, a most restful state. <laughs>